PPP loan changes. June 1st are some next steps. And the mayor and city administrator join on the video today. Happy Friday, May 29th. I'm Brad Meyer with the Owatonna Chamber of Commerce. Thanks for joining and watching today. A bill passed the Congressional House that would extend the PPP loan program from eight weeks to 24 weeks and would allow businesses to use up to 60% on payroll versus 75%, allowing for some flexibility within loan forgiveness. This is something we've been hearing from businesses on. The challenge of meeting that 75% level as businesses is, is down right now has been a huge challenge. It goes to the Senate next. We'd like to see this go through because it would give our businesses a lot of flexibility and a little bit more opportunity as they're working through all the, the things during this COVID pandemic. On Monday, some additional businesses come online, namely our salons at a 25% capacity. Restaurants will be allowed outdoor seating starting June 1st. Our fitness centers are still restricted as are a lot of summer activities that have uncertainty to it. We know our businesses are ready to open safely. We urge the governor to let our restaurants have some indoor seating, open our fitness facilities, and continue to move the needle on this thing. Are you ready to jumpstart Owatonna businesses? If you haven't heard about the initiative, Jumpstart Owatonna, this is our community effort to support small business. Uh, we've got some dollars for grants, in-kind resources, and we're asking for additional local spending by some of our larger companies. You can check it out. And if you're interested in either A, contributing to the cause, or B, if you need some assistance, go to owatana.org and click on the Jumpstart Owatana page for ways to donate and also ways to apply for the resources available. We think this is gonna be a, a real exciting way for our local community to rally around our small businesses. Now to talk more about options within the city of Owatonna for not only our restaurants, but other businesses. Joining us is Mayor Tom Kuntz and City Administrator Chris Boosie. Thank you both for joining us today. And uh, Mayor, we're going to start with you here. Um, what are you hearing as mayor here in Owatonna from businesses and the community as a whole? In what ways is the city able to assist with businesses who are now starting to reopen? In, from the mayor's perspective, I'm not getting a lot of feedback. I think most of the feedback's getting directed towards the chamber or our city offices, uh, Chuck Lecker and Greg Kursky. We are there to help in any direction that we can. I think some of the th concerns are maybe a lack of understanding what everything means when it gets coming down from the governor. You know, if you're going to have outdoor seating and you're not serving liquor, what do you need to do? If you're having outdoor seating and you're gonna serve liquor, uh, how does that get roped off and how do you petition that? So I think from uh, the mayor's perspective and the city's perspective, we're there for every case. We'll take a look at whatever anybody needs. And if it falls in the guidelines, uh, we will help in every way we can. Thanks, Mayor. And that leads into a good question that I want to ask uh, City Administrator Boosie about as well, which is respect to restaurants specifically. And Chris, I know you were, as was the mayor, were on a call with us earlier this week uh, about the restaurants and the outdoor seating and the new rules for uh, June 1st. Can you talk a little bit about the role that you feel the city will play in this and, and uh, how flexible will you be with outdoor seating options? Well, um, you know, the call that we were on was a, a great opportunity to hear from bars, restaurants, what they need, what, it, what their concerns are. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to help facilitate this uh, to not be a barrier and to make it as easy as possible. So what we're putting on the agenda for June 2nd is a resolution that would authorize the city administrator to process those permits necessary for bars and restaurants to have liquor, uh, to extend their liquor license or their premise uh, and serve liquor outside. So we're trying to be able to speed that up. We're working right now on, you know, some simple applications, you know, trying to keep the uh, guidelines to just the, you know, the basics, the extension of liquor liability for these extended premises, you know, uh, to, 
delineate the area to have some barriers to ensure that um, uh, they're enforcing the, you know, the, um, uh, you know, carding people as necessary. Um, also, um, probably would have them sign if they're in a public parking lot or, or a sidewalk or something, uh, uh, what we call a temporary use uh, agreement just kind of outlines, here's the, here's the facts, keep that as simple as possible. But we want to help, we want to, um, you know, make sure that we can do everything possible to help our bars and restaurants to survive. And Chris, if restaurants are looking at this and wanting to do some things, and maybe it does not involve alcohol, but they want mm -hmm. to extend out, mm -hmm. it sounded like from the call that the city's pretty flexible about, you can just do it, is that right? Well, we probably want some kind of, um, you know, simple form that's filled out to just identify the area and have a basic understanding of what they want to do and for how long and you know, that's where a, like a temporary use agreement would come into play. Um, but, you know, if they have, let's say they have private property, uh, you know, parking lots and, and whatnot, I mean, they can, they can do that right now and, and delineate their area and do whatever they want. It's only when we're talking about sidewalks, parking lots, public spaces that we need a little, a little uh, documents to, uh, to be filled out. Right, public spaces, that makes sense. That's uh, good clarity. Mayor, were you jumping in there? Yeah, the only comment I'll make is that if they're gonna put a tent up on the outside in order to put some covering over them, uh, the fire department would have to come and just verify egress and all that to make sure it's safe. Mm -hmm. Thanks and for that clarification too. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. Uh, we would wanna make sure that everyone's following the COVID guidelines as best they can with the reservations. And if people want to put tents outside, they encourage you to, you know, keep the sides open or at least one side for that airflow. Uh, we would encourage that as well. I know there's been uh, some conversations too, I think more so from the general public than from the restaurant owners right now about closing streets down and things of that nature. I think um, uh, there's a balance in there too, it seems with the other businesses. And I know you guys are, are looking at that and, and I don't know that there's any immediate plans for anything like that, right? Right, I mean, we'd be open to talking about that. And obviously we'd have some public safety things that we'd have to keep in mind, but you know, it's hard to know how much uh, time and energy for everyone to invest in these kind of temporary locations. I mean, are the is this gonna be for a month or two months or six months, you know? Um, if we knew that, then, you know, maybe we would be looking at additional uh, spaces for folks. I think it's just hard to know how long we're going to be under this restriction. And Chris, maybe one other thing. I know this happened a little while ago, but uh, the city did some things with liquor license for uh, bars and restaurants as well uh, regarding their expense there. Yes. Um, essentially, what we did is, um, so the liquor licenses end, um, let's see, like at the end of May, and so what we did was during the period that they were unable to use their license or fully use their license, because um, there was a period there where you could sell to go, um, but for each day that they were not able to fully utilize their license, we refunded uh, that day of license fee. So, well, they, they, they have the choice. They could either take that as cash or apply it to next year's. So most people have been applying that to next year's license. And so um, come June 1st, their license fee was uh, a lot less. And we also uh, uh, allowed them to spread that payment out. So only a portion uh, of that amount was due on June, June 1st. And that was another help uh, for them as well. So then the, the second half will be due at the end of uh, the license period. So uh, I think um, I think that was very well received. Thanks, Chris. Mayor, I'll, I'll go back to you for the last question here. Um, so, you know, as we look ahead, there's obviously within the business community some unrest about the, the timeline here and just not the unknown of when can we open. What roles or actions do you see the city taking with respect to 
advocacy to the state or maybe more specifically to the governor? You know, we have uh, two great legislators, uh, John Jawinski and John Petersburg. And the sad part about some of this, it seems like party politics are uh, taking over a little bit and that uh, uh, Mr. Jawinski feels that the Republican Party is not being heard. We will do everything we can in order to uh, make contact with the governor, write letters or whatever we need to do. Most of our lobbying, we belong to the Coalition of Great Minnesota Cities, the Minnesota Mayor's Association, the League of Minnesota Cities, and we support any of the documents that they put forward in order to try and get the governor uh, to open up a little bit more. Uh, I know that he has been uh, pretty firm on his uh, 10 people and everything, but uh, we will continue to uh, work with the coalition, the league, and our representatives to try and get this thing opened up more for business. Mayor Kuntz and uh, Chris Boosie, city administrator with the city of Owatonna, we appreciate your time today. Thanks for, thanks for coming on with us. Well, one more comment I'd like to make is that uh, the park and rec department has really worked hard at taking a look at where can we put benches and tables and that type of stuff. We got some in Central Park. We got some in the old theater lot downtown and some of the parks have got them in. Uh, so we have uh, feel that we're utilizing the benches to the best of our ability. Thank you, Mayor. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, City Administrator Boosie. Appreciate both of your time today. Thanks for being on. In, in closing here, um, we're definitely watching the activities of uh, happening up in the Twin Cities metro area. And uh, obviously with great concern uh, for all parties involved up there and uh, our thoughts and concern and prayers with them. Also more locally, I uh, wanted to recognize the Steel County Free Fair Board's uh, decision to cancel the fair this year. Um, I was able to be at that meeting and I understand how difficult of a decision that was when we know you were taking the fair and the community into consideration with that decision as well. And so thank you for your leadership there. We know it was not an easy one. It's not an easy one for us in the community either. Uh, last note, just thank you to everybody who's been purchasing chamber gift certificates. The nice thing with those is they can be used throughout the community at any of our 530 chamber business members. It's a nice way to keep the dollars local and feel free to reach out to us. Our office is open eight to five Monday through Friday uh, if you'd like to purchase some for yourself or your employees. Thanks for watching today and uh, have a great weekend.